All right, with this forecast video update on this Monday, January the 18th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you guys had a great weekend and, of course, a, a great uh, MLK holiday. And I have to say it's been really just a cooler weekend we had across Central Florida, including today. But for those of you that do not like cooler temperatures, at least if you're not a fan of it, uh, the good news is that uh, temperatures will start to warm up here by later this week, which I'll have the details about that here in just a little bit. But uh, first things first. Let's go ahead and take a look what's happening right now as far as temperatures go in central Florida, basically from this afternoon, as you can see. And, uh, and as you can see, the temperatures mostly saw 60s here across central Florida. So, for example, here in Orlando, we actually, uh, we actually, we actually saw a high temperature today at about 66 degrees. And, and that goes for the same thing for you folks in uh, Titusville, Kissimmee. But look at Lakeland. It looks like the temperature got close to about 70 earlier today. Uh, for the afternoon, afternoon high temperature, but farther north you go, temperatures stayed only in the mid-60s, including places like the Villages, uh, Sanford, Daytona Beach, Palm Coast, and Ocala. But if we take a look at our temperatures right now currently at this uh, 8 o'clock hour, we are starting to drop, uh, drop into the 50s already here across the viewing area. But if you go farther up north, including places such as Ocala and the Villages, temperatures are Mostly uh, getting, getting getting down a little bit chilly as you, as you can see, as you can see with mostly lower 50s, but we got some upper 50s to about near 60 uh, right now in and around Orlando, Sanford, Kissimmee, and back over towards Lakeland, and we got some mid it's the mid 50s here right along I 95. So if you got any plans this evening, uh, just take a jacket or a sweater. But uh, other than that, it's looking looking to be a perfect evening uh, since we don't have to do with any uh, rain or anything. So. So there you have it, and <clears throat> and as we go ahead and take a look at uh, future cast, I'm going to show you how cold it's going to get tonight because we're expecting uh, some temperatures, at least for some locations, to get down into the 30s again overnight tonight. But again, a warm up is on the way this week, and but most want to know how warm it's going to get. So I'm going to show you that here on future cast too. And before I switch to future cast, I do want to mention that if you live in Sumter, Northern Lake, uh, let's say Marion, Volusia, and Flagler counties in the darker blue colors. Uh, that is actually a frost advisory that is currently in effect right now because with, where temperatures could hit 30s overnight tonight, that could lead into some frost. And, uh, and, and, and in these areas in blue, as you can see, in the case uh, freeze watches and warnings, which does include, Mar does include Marion County as well. So, <clears throat> so just <coughs> excuse me. So just uh, keep that in mind. So here is future cast. And before we get started, as usual, if you're just coming into uh, Facebook Live on this Monday evening, don't forget to uh, go ahead, as usual, to share this feed to your other Facebook followers. Because remember, my motto is sharing is caring. And before we also get started, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and share this feed to one of my other pages. So hang on just a minute, and uh, we'll talk about the uh, temperatures we're expecting tonight, as far, since it's going to be cold, and the warmer temperatures for this week. Show a little up here in just a second. All right, so as we head into the overnight hours late tonight into early tomorrow morning, so we're going to stop the clock here for seven for seven in the morning. It looks like we'll see temperatures again getting down into the upper 30s, maybe mid 30s for some locations too. So basically, Ocala and the villages could see some upper 30s tonight, at least overnight into the first half of the day tomorrow, and others only in the 40s, including here in the metro Orlando area. So again, the 30s are going to be staying just to the north and west of where we live here. So basically, again, Lake County, Marion, portions of Sumter, Volusia, and Flacker counties where temperatures could drop into the mid to upper 30s overnight tonight. And again, that could lead into some frost, so be sure if you live north of Orlando before you go to bed tonight to protect those uh, tropical plants, because if you don't, you know the frost could kill the, those uh, plants. So the two, so there's two options that you, you can do. One is to uh, maybe cover cover them up cover them up with a blanket or bring them into your house. So just want to let you all know about that. Uh, you know, 
whenever we have frost events uh, here in Central Florida, like we're going to see again tomorrow morning. And of course, before you head out the door in the morning, be sure you, you want to look at that uh, uh, sweater and coat because, again, temperatures will not be feeling pretty once we begin into uh, tomorrow morning. And then as we head into the afternoon, after a cold start, we'll see temperatures uh, get up into the upper 60s and maybe some could float around 70 degrees tomorrow. So not too bad and not as really cool like we've been seeing, like we saw today or over the weekend, but at least it'll be slightly cooler. But not too bad, like I've said before. So the high temperature, the high temperature tomorrow in Orlando will hit about 67. We could see a high temperature in Sanford and Titusville at about 66 degrees. Uh, could see some lower 60s, so still a bit cooler for you folks in Daytona Beach, Palm Coast, Ocala, and the Villages. So light jackets will likely be needed if you're going to be out and about uh, running some errands or perhaps uh, taking a walk with maybe with the dogs, so uh, maybe to the beach or something like that. Because it's not really a big warm up again, but again that won't be until Wednesday. And then as we head into the evening hours, we'll see mostly temperatures uh, uh, cooled off into the 50s by around seven or eight. So again, jackets will be needed if you got any plans uh, for, you know, at least after sunset. And then as we head into overnight tomorrow night into early Wednesday morning, uh, we'll see temperatures start off. <coughs> Excuse excuse me, start off in the low to mid 40s across most of the viewing area. So you, so you may need a sweater or a jacket before you head out the door early Wednesday morning for work and school. And as we head into Wednesday afternoon, here we go. This, this is when we'll see temperatures warm up into the upper 60s, especially if we go north with others in the lower 70s. So it could be, could be a perfect day tomorrow, or well, I wouldn't say tomorrow, but maybe on Wednesday. Uh, to uh, maybe hang out with your friends or your families uh, outdoors, whether it be spending a day at the, at the beach or the attractions. And yes, we're expecting more of the way of sunshine. And then as we head into the evening hours, once the feature cast loads up again, should take just a minute. So about, so about, so about around uh, 7 or 8 o'clock Wednesday evening, we'll see temperatures... Uh, you know, cool off into the mid to upper 50s. But if you go towards Orlando in Kissimmee, we could see we could still see lower 60s between seven or eight. Also Wednesday night, and then as the clock ends towards early Thursday, at least uh, overnight, uh, late Wednesday to early Thursday, we'll see temperatures drop into the lower 50s from Orlando south and north of the metro in the mid to upper 40s. So there you have it there. And uh, if we go ahead and take a look at the radar. Before we get right to the GFS, I'm going to show you what's happening right now in Central Florida. And as you can see, we are looking quiet. So I don't, like I said, like I said before, I don't expect any rain to remain in the forecast this week. So we'll be we'll be we'll be we'll be stuck with some dry weather. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So here is the GFS. So let's get into uh, late this week, which is. Uh, Thursday, so by Thursday afternoon, we'll see the same thing like we'll see tomorrow and Wednesday, just another day of mostly sunny skies, but there is a system that is developing from the north and west that could bring some precipitation across portions of the Mississippi Valley region, but but uh, I don't think any of that's going to be approaching our neck of the woods as we head into the second half of the work week, so just keep that in mind, and temperatures for highs down below looks to be Again, warming up nicely as we get up into the low to mid 70s by Thursday afternoon. It looks like temperatures could warm up, uh, warm up a little nicer, especially if we go north across the Mississippi Valley region. But it's still looking a little cool, with mostly in the 50s to low 60s in and around Birmingham to Jackson, Atlanta, and Charleston. But we'll be on the really warm side here in the Sunshine State. So if you like warm weather, then there you go. All right, as we get into uh, Friday, which is the 22nd, the good, again, uh, the good news is we'll be looking dry in central Florida for those of you that want, some, want more sunny weather. Uh, but uh, the heaviest rain is going to stay farther up north across the Mississippi Valley region. As you can see, that across basically from Alabama and Mississippi, uh, there could be some heavy rains that could maybe bring some uh, localized flooding concerns. So that's something we could watch. That can range between two to four inches. So that's... Uh, a little bit, a little bit of some, uh, a little bit of a concern for these folks up there as we head towards Friday, but 
none of, none of that's going to happen here at the state here on that day. So if you got any plans, to, so if you got any plans on Friday, you are good to go. And uh, once again, we'll be warming up nicely uh, by Friday afternoon as we continue to stay in the low to middle 70s. But it looks like there might be a front that is uh, going to be dropping from the north to south and behind it as it brings more precip across the Mississippi Valley region. That's going to bring temperatures down from at least a little warmer to chillier with mostly in the way of 40s. But we're not expecting any of that here to happen, uh, at, least, at, at least as we get through the rest of this uh, work week. So... So, so please do enjoy the 70s and enjoy the nice sunny weather if you can uh, as we get into at least Wednesday through Friday, at least by the second half of this week I'm talking about. <clears throat> All right, now heading into Saturday, the final, uh, the final weekend of uh, January. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to keep clearing, keep clearing my throat a lot. So here's Saturday, and again, we're expecting most of us to stay dry here in central Florida, but the rain continues across the Mississippi Valley region, especially from uh, southern Alabama to Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, and South Carolina. So, but again, not expecting any of that to happen on that day, so if you got plans, then you're good to go. And our temperatures, once again, will stay warmer in the low to mid-70s, but it seems like that cold front is going to be dropping a little more to the south, as especially if you go just to the north of Orlando or north of Ocala, where temperatures could cool off down into the 50s and 60s as we head towards that day. So uh, that is something we're, we're going to be watching uh, closely. But I'll keep you all posted in case if anything changes. But it looks like the front may not approach central Florida as we head into Sunday, basically. And that could allow us maybe that could allow allow us to see a few showers possible, but, not, but we're not expecting anything severe or anything too significant, which is a good thing. But over towards the I-95 corridor, there could be about a 30% coverage of a few isolated showers, especially coastal showers as we head towards Sunday afternoon, with about a 20% in our inland communities, including the city of Orlando, but otherwise. Not an all-day rain event. And our temperatures will start to cool down slightly ahead of that weak front. And that's going to allow temperatures to go down into the upper 60s to low 70s, we'll call, for highs as we head towards um, Sunday. So not really too bad as far as temperature-wise goes, since the front looks to be much weaker. And again, it's not going to be raining all day, so I don't expect this to be a washout. So if you got any plans Sunday afternoon, don't cancel them, because I think the rain will just be just a uh, quick hit or miss type, I guess you can call it. And I think we'll see more showers again on Monday of next week. And again, the range remains isolated at about 20% we'll call. So 20% chance for a few showers by a week from today, January 25th. But there might be yet again another system that can bring some more precipitation across the Mississippi Valley region. And, not, and that might be ahead of another front. So that's something we're going to have to watch uh, closely too. But temperature-wise for Central Florida, it looks to be warming up uh, back into the mid-70s by Monday afternoon after a slightly cooler uh, day on Sunday. But uh, look at these temperatures once you go farther up north. As you can see, it could, it could remain in the 60s and, and even into the lower 70s across the Mississippi Valley region. So there may not be just there may not just be showers, but there could be maybe some thunderstorms, uh, maybe some spring-like thunderstorms uh, for these folks around, again, from Mississippi to Alabama and Georgia as we head into Monday. And some of them could turn strong, and maybe some could turn severe. So let's see what the instability has to say about the severe threat across the, Miss the Mississippi Valley region by early next week. And it does show, right for right now, the severe threat appears to be limited. So not a big widespread severe weather outbreak, as far as I know of. But, you know, since that uh, since the temperatures could be warmer, and that there could be maybe a you need a little bit of at least a little bit of enough fuel to produce a few storms. Some could produce strong to produce to maybe potentially a few isolated severe storms in the in the in the lighter blue shaded colors. So so we'll keep an eye on that for you guys. But again, it's just too early to tell since we're about a week away. But you know, it could change. So I'll keep you posted. And heading into Tuesday of next week, a week from tomorrow, January the 26th. And once again, we'll be looking dry in central Florida after a little bit of a rainy activity that, we'll, that we could be seeing on Sunday and Monday. But again, the highest chance of rain will be staying north across the Mississippi Valley region. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, 
And for us, we'll be warming up uh, at least way above average by that day. We're talking about mostly upper 70s and maybe some could flow around 80 degrees for the high temperature by Tuesday of next week. Now, the last time we saw 80s here in Central Florida will have to be back on New Year's Day. And even, at all, and even on the first weekend of the new year, because that's when, that's when we saw, or blast saw, I should say, temperatures in the lower 80s. But some of you could see that maybe to wrap up January by next week. So we'll keep an eye on it for you guys. But, uh, uh, but it's still a little too early to tell, but it's something we, we can still uh, watch once again. So I'll keep you all posted. And Wednesday of next week looks to be, again, Relatively dry. Can't will out maybe a nice little shower or two, especially if you live in, across portions of southern Sumter and southern Lake counties. But uh, it looks like the system that's going to bring a good chance of rain early next week will start to die down and bring maybe just some showers across uh, the northern half of Florida and across southern Georgia and over towards uh, Charleston, South Carolina. But uh, other than that, no big deal. And it looks like temperatures will stay, again, on the warmer category with mostly in the mid-70s. But if you go farther south and west, perhaps down in southern Florida, temperatures could even warm up uh, maybe into the upper 70s to perhaps low 80s uh, for high temperatures. So we'll see. But it looks like the showers could start to blossom up here by next Thursday. This is January 28th. One week from this Thursday, so right now it, uh, the GFS pr uh, points out maybe just a maybe just a thirty percent coverage of some isolate isolated showers here in Central Florida, and that's that's pretty good. That's, that's a good thing. We could use maybe a little bit of more rain in Central Florida because almost throughout January has been really the driest month uh, we've seen here to start off the new year. Uh, but uh, since we haven't seen since we haven't seen a whole haven't seen a whole lot of rain for a while, I think we could use maybe more of that uh, if the GFS is correct. And then, with the showers, is ahead of another front. It could be maybe a strong cold front that could try to move through by the 28th, and that could drop temperatures from the 70s down into the 50s, especially if you go towards o towards Ocala and others in the low to mid 60s. So warm, so we'll be, trans so we'll be transitioning from warm to cooler temperatures here by the end of next week. So, so we'll have to watch that uh, closely. But you know, it could change. So I'll keep you all posted. And behind uh, the second uh, cold front, and again, it's a strong one, by the morning of Friday, January the 29th, as we're entering the land of Voodoo Country, temper temperatures are going to start to drop chillier into the 40s, basically. Don't, don't see any 30s uh, here in the state, well, especially in the viewing area. But if you go farther up north, across the Florida Panhandle and, and, and around the Mississippi Valley region, temperatures could drop into the 20s and 30s to start off the morning on the last Friday of January. So... Yeah, winter could return uh, by the end of next week. So remember, winter's not done yet. Still got more weeks to go. And after a chilly start, we'll be mostly dry here in central Florida as the second front continues to uh, pull off from the coast of Florida. And as far as, far as temperatures go for highs, we remain cool in the low to mid-60s. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So it looks like it could be a little bit of a cool start to the last few, at least the few last days of January. So uh, we'll see. But as far as the lows go for the morning of Saturday, January the 30th, the good news is I don't see any 30s to deal with. So instead of seeing 30s for lows, we'll start off with mostly in the 40s to about near 50 degrees, we'll call, early in the morning of the 30th. So the 30s will stay mostly north across the Mississippi Valley region. But again, it's just too early to tell because we're about uh, still about a week away, so it could change. So we'll keep you all posted. But other than that, the rest of the day on the 30th looks to be staying quiet with lots of sunshine here in the, in the state of Florida with uh, temperatures below that. Warming up uh, a little bit with back into the mid to upper 60s. Maybe some could float around 70 again on the last Saturday for the month. Of this month, of this month of January, basically. So, and here is the last day of the month. Uh, that's uh, the thirty-first, and as you can see, yet again, we'll be staying dry here in the Sunshine State, with uh, not a whole lot of rain to worry about, except there could be some showers that could try to sneak in across portions of the Atlantic coast. But none of that's going to, but none of that's going to be heading into our direction, as far as I know of, and temperatures. For highs, 
will continue to warm up into the upper 60s and maybe some can flirt low 70s for highs as we head into that day. <clears throat> and then as we head into Monday, the first day of February, uh, right now, according to the GFS, it seems like another system will try to slide into the southeast that could bring maybe a little bit of some rain in for portions of central Florida, especially if we go towards uh, Marion to Flackler and Volusia counties. But uh, the rest of central Florida looks to stay mostly sunny and dry. But we'll keep an eye on it for you guys in case if anything changes. But the highest chance of rain would be north across most of Georgia and to northeastern sections of Alabama and South Carolina. And that could be ahead of, yet again, another cold front. And temperatures for highs down below ahead of another front will be looking slightly warm, but still a little bit cooler with mostly in the mid-60s here in the state. But uh, again, it's still too early to make a call because we're in the land of voodoo. So it could change. But the highest chance of rain looks to hold off for everybody else as we head, as we head into Groundhog Day, which is on Tuesday, February 2nd. So we'll call for about a 50% coverage of some scattered showers and maybe if not, maybe a thunder shower or two. So uh, that, at least that's good. We could at least at least it's good. We could use a little bit of, a little bit of more rain yet again here in the state. But the heaviest looks to be off towards the coast of uh, South Carolina and Georgia. But we're not expecting anything too significant or heavy as far as I know of. Again, as we approach Groundhog Day, and temperatures for highs looks to be dropping from cool to even chilly as another front passes through as we get down into the mid fifties to about near sixty right here in the Sunshine State. And as far as the cold temperatures go from the morning of Wednesday, February 3rd, it looks like uh, for now, if you live in Marion County, including the city of Ocala, it looks like you could get down into the upper 30s, uh, to the at least on the morning of the 3rd. That could lead to maybe to some patchy frost, but the 30s here, as you can see, will, will be mostly staying north across, again, the Mississippi Valley region, including Birmingham, Jackson, Atlanta, and Charleston, where temperatures can drop into the 20s also, and maybe even low 30s. So remember, winter's not done yet. And then after a, a very chilly start to the day on the 3rd, by afternoon, it looks like uh, there may be a few coastal showers left over along I-95, but the rain will push off towards the east of our state. Otherwise, it will be mostly dry and sunny. And temperatures will remain cool and chilly, with mostly mid to upper 50s north, and from Orlando south in the, south in the low to mid 60s. So there you folks have it. All right, gang, I'm going to start opening up this uh, Facebook Live feed on this Monday night. So that's it for the forecast video update. And I expect to have the next update again live tomorrow night between 8 and 8.30. So if you guys can uh, join me then. And I'll continue, as always, with posting my notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages 24-7. But in the meantime, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Monday night. And I will see you all again tomorrow night at 8 for another live weather update for Central Florida. And again, remember to take care of yourselves and each other, and God bless you all.